So this class, like all the ones I'm teaching at the moment, are focused on uh, mental resilience and um, coping with the particular uh, difficulties of lockdown that we're in at the moment. And um, in particular, the additional stress that that has imposed on everyone. Uh, and I've talked about this in previous classes about the palpable sense of fear that, that is out there. So we're using our practice really to nourish ourselves. It's, it's all about self-care. Uh, and that's not in a selfish way. If you, if you self-care, if you nourish your, your own breath, your own immune system, your own resilience, then you can be a steady presence for, for those around you. So it helps, it helps everybody. So we're gonna begin with a little bit of breath work. If I could just invite you to pause for a moment with your eyes closed. And if anybody doesn't want to close their eyes, just take the gaze forward and down. And take a moment to really come into this, this class, fully present, fully inhabiting your body, fully aware of every sensation in your body. Notice the touch of the body on the ground, whether that's through the feet and the hips, if you're in a chair, or through the feet and the hips in a slightly different way if you're sitting cross-legged on your mat. Notice what you feel in your body. Make sure you're gonna look after yourself. And also notice your state of mind right now, whether your mind is already steady and settled, or whether, whether your mind is suffering from any of those stress or anything else that I was just talking about. And then begin to tune into your breath. And if you open your eyes for a moment, we're going to we're going to focus on the abdominal breath. So the idea here is to really relax the tummy. I wouldn't normally say that, but those who know know how I work, I do like uh, a little bit of engagement of core muscles when we're sitting up or standing. But for this practice at this time, you really need to release this this area of the abdomen. So you're going to keep the abdomen soft, and you're going to focus the breath down in the lower part of the lungs. Uh, that'll be the movement of your breathing diaphragm and the effect that you'll feel in the body should be, we hope, a slight swelling of the abdomen as you breathe in and a slight softening and moving back as you breathe out. And this breath very much is like a sphere, like this breathing ball that I'm using. So as we breathe in and keep the tummy relaxed, the diaphragm does its work. And as well as the tummy moving out a little bit, the lower ribs will slightly move out as well. So space is being created, a ball of space, a sphere in which the breath can be drawn deep down into the base of the lungs. And this abdominal breath accounts for at least 50% of your normal inhale and exhale. It's your main muscle of breathing, particularly when you're asleep, lying down, relaxed. This will be doing almost all of your breathing, probably 98% of your breathing will be soft diaphragmatic breath down in the abdomen. And as you let this area of the abdomen soften with the breath, we're encouraging any, any stuck emotions, any stress, because this, this area is, is a storehouse for emotional stress. And we always feel a tightness, um, sometimes called a gut feeling or that fear that we feel in the, in the stomach uh, at times of stress. So if you've been having any of that or any, any people you are around have that, then just give them the gift of, of abdominal breathing to help them let some of that stress go. 
So we're going to move the breath on a little bit and I'm going to invite you to bring your hands together like this and just begin to breathe in and breathe out to reflect the sphere. It's as if I'm still holding that little breathing ball. And then what we're going to do is add in the action of our intercostal muscles in the ribs so that we can stretch our breath. We're going to make our inhale a little bit longer and that's going to lead to a longer exhale. So as you breathe in, separate the palms for that expansion and then take them up a little bit and turn the palms. So this is now a lifting movement as well. So this, this part of the breath, the abdominal part happens first and then the ribs begin to lift for the second part of the breath. And as you exhale, just turning the palms, bring the hands towards each other. The hand movement isn't necessary. If you do this in your own practice, you don't have to do the hand movement, but it, it's a helpful connection to represent with our hands what we want to feel in the body and in our breath. So you should be feeling like this inhale is going on a little bit longer now. And it's got a quality that is different from the abdominal breath. It's got this lifting and it's more of an expansive quality as you engage the muscles up in the chest. So see if you can notice that and see if you can notice how much longer your breath is when you engage with those chest muscles. And I'm just gonna finish this off and it literally is the icing on the cake because you just have a little bit of lung capacity right at the top of the lungs, which is accessed with some neck muscles, which lifts the collarbone and the very top two ribs. I'm gonna represent that by just lifting the fingers at the end of the inhale. So starting on your next inhale, expand, expand, expand lifting the ribs and right at the end of the inhale just feel like you're lifting the collarbones those muscles will just engage automatically you don't even need to think about contracting your neck muscles so just do it automatically as you exhale release the fingers turn the palms bring the hands together if we make these three sections of the breath really really smooth as indicated by this flowing movement of the hands we should be now feeling that we're stretching our breath to its maximum comfortable length and when i've been working with this it's dropped my breathing rate down to about one and a half breaths per minute so the inhale can last up to 20 seconds the exhale up to 20 seconds and then you're only you've only got time to take your next inhale before the minute is up so it's a very slow breath compared with our our natural breathing rate which might be anything from 10 12 or 15 breaths per minute but the really interesting thing is you're getting more breath into your body with this slow deep breathing than you can ever get into your body through the shallow unconscious breath that many of us just do every single day. There's nothing wrong with that, it's just when we take control of the breath we can really make a massive difference to what we experience. So do one more breath in your own time with or without the hand movement and at the end of the next exhale, if you've been working with your eyes open, close the eyes for a moment and just notice the effect of that breath on your body and on your mind. And actually what you might notice is a slight rush of energy, which would mean that you have slightly hyperventilated. Um, even though 
you are breathing very slowly and deeply. If you're not used to that kind of amount of air coming in out of the body, then, then that could be an experience. Um, and we're not, we're not moving, so we're not using up um, all the oxygen that we're taking in. So we're going to move on now, um, and you can carry on doing the next little section in a chair, where you can uh, come down onto the mat. Um, I quite like to get people to do this in a chair every now and then, because it just helps you um, have some tools that if you're stuck in a chair or in an office. I know not many people are in an office at the moment. Um, you know, if you're working from home, you can just take a couple of minutes and do some of these chair-based releases. So we're going to begin by bringing the palms together in front of the heart and we're going to inhale and draw the shoulders back and down and we're going to exhale and bring the palms together. So the first movement is really gentle. The arms are as relaxed as possible. There's just enough muscular effort to stop the arms falling down beside the body. But there's no tension here and you're really feeling those shoulder blades are able to move back and slide down the back on that inhale and exhale bring the palms together and then release the hands down palms up and breathing in float the arms up into the air and breathing out turn the palms and lower the arms down Turn the palms ready for the next inhale. We've been doing this practice quite a lot in my classes. This, my students who come regularly will recognize this one. It's a simple practice, but it really helps us to connect to the inhale and the exhale. And the turning of the palms is the transition between inhale and exhale. So it stops us in effect shortening the in-breath or the out-breath. And on this next exhale, just let the arms hang, give the arms a little shake. And then arms are completely relaxed. You're going to take the shoulders forward and up. And then as you exhale, you're going to take the shoulders back and down and forwards and up. And exhale back and down and once more forwards and up and exhale down. bring the fingertips onto the tops of the shoulders and we're going to circle the elbows now half a circle for the in breath and half a circle for the out breath just once more in this direction, making sure it's pain free, keeping the shoulders soft, and then try your last one coming in the other direction. It's a bit like if you go swimming and you've, you've seen someone do the butterfly strike on the TV and you have a go yourself. An incredible range of motion in the shoulders and also a thoroughly exhausting <laughs> way of swimming that involves actually a lot of interesting back strength to, to do properly. So um, we're going to take a little side stretch now, just really briefly. You're going to take the right arm up. I'm not going to mirror you, so this looks like my left is actually your right. You're going to inhale and reach up and exhale. Just lean over to the side. Take one breath here and really feel as if you're trying to inflate this right side of the chest more than the left to stretch between each rib all the way down the body. Keep breathing and exhaling, softening into the stretch. And then breathing in, coming up, turn the palm, exhale, release down. And we'll do the same on the other side. Breathe in, float the arm up and exhale, stretching the left side now, leaning over to your right. And again, now opening on the in breath, the left side of the chest, stretching between each rib. Exhaling, softening a little bit into the side bend. Next inhale coming up, turn the palm, exhale, lower the hands down, give the arms a little shake, re shrug the shoulders to release any tension that has crept in, and then bring the hands together in front of the heart, 
Take a breath in, sit nice and tall, and then you're going to rotate clockwise to the right. I'm going to turn the shoulders and the head initially, but not the legs. You might be doing this cross-legged, you might be in the chair like me. And once you're in the twist, take one breath here, lengthening the axis of your spine, and exhale, turn the shoulders and the head a little bit more around to the right. And then on your next inhale, you're going to leave the shoulders there, turn the head and look into the room. So now you have your shoulders going one way, your head going the opposite way. Do the same thing. Inhale, lengthen up through the centre of the body. Exhale, deepen the twist in both directions. And then inhale, release the centre, palms together. And exhale, going around to the other side. Turn the head, turn the shoulders, inhale, lengthen up, exhale, release into the twist. On the next inhale, turning the head to look into the room, breathing in, lengthening up, and breathing out, twisting into opposite directions. Very good, and then breathing in, coming back to centre, both hands on the thigh if you're in a chair. If you're sitting cross-legged, just reach forward for the floor in front of you. If you're on the mat, you probably won't come as far forward as we're going to come if, we're, if you're in a chair. And actually, this is, this is a practice that works much better in a chair. So even if you're not in a chair now, maybe tomorrow when you are in a chair, just have a go at coming into this forward bend position. It's so effective at lengthening out the lower back and releasing space in the sacroiliac joint. And you can keep the hands on the thighs or you could let the hands hang all the way down. So this is good for anyone with a little bit of discomfort in the lower back. Um, but it's also, also a nice little counter pose for us after the twist. And then the last practice we'll do is a little gentle heart opening so we're not going to do any back bend in the neck, do a little bit in the lower back, but we're going to pull the tummy in below the navel, so lower abdominals drawing in, just to contain the lower back there. So I'm trying to do most of our movement between the neck and the top of the lower back by drawing the shoulders back, lifting the ribs. Again, side view might be a little bit helpful here, so the arms can reach back, hold the chair, we just stretch back. Feel like the shoulders, instead of coming up, are going down and drawing back. And you're really opening, opening your heart. Lovely. Okay, so we are going to come off the chair now. I'm going to slightly adjust my camera. And... This class is a little bit um, back to front from my normal presentation. So we would normally build up to doing some sun salutations. But again, if you've been attending the teaching with me this month, you'll know that we've been doing a very inclusive version of sun salutations that we teach on the Yoga and Healthcare Alliance Yoga for Health course for NHS patients. So we're starting with the feet hip width apart or even a little bit wider. And in this position, if you just want to lift your toes and try to spread your toes for a moment, keeping the palms together in front of the heart, and then exhale, relax the toes down, and then breathing in, grip the mat with the toes and let the heels hover up, We're only lifting them a centimeter, and exhale down. We can do that a couple more times just to awaken some of the many muscles and joints in the feet before we use them in our sun salutation. So we can do a little bit of rocking here. So exhale, heels down. Inhale, toes up. Exhale, toes down. Inhale, heels up. And one more time. And anytime you are standing, not doing not very much, like waiting for the kettle to boil. Just think about doing some of these foot exercises. 
get your feet out of shoes, get your socks off, make sure you're on a non-slippy surface and really, really work the feet in this way to keep them supple, but also to strengthen the arches of the feet. And then next time the heels come down, we're going to start our sun salutation practice. So we're going to breathe in and take the hands up. I'm not going to go very high because you actually only need to go to here. Uh, and partly if I go up there, my hands are going to disappear. <laughs> and then as you exhale, we're going to sway. No, we're not. <laughs> as you exhale, we're going to bend the knees and we're going to sweep the arms around and bring the hands onto the thighs and then fall forwards until the spine is level with the floor. Breathing in, arch the back and hover the hands off the knees if you can. This is like an Utkatasana position. So we're strengthening the, the quads, the hamstrings, we're engaging the core, and the spine is very neutral and we're strengthening the back. This is inhale and then exhale. We're gonna soften forwards a little bit more into the forward bend. And for those of you who really are here for a good stretch, you can take the hands down and do a full Uttanasana got any blood pressure issues any reasons keep the head level with the heart then you just keep the hands here and straighten the legs for that exact same stretch to come back up bend the knees flatten the back sweep the arms up around to the side reach up and then bring the palms down through the midline in front of the heart inhale take the hands up and exhale sway to the right Inhale, come up and exhale, come back to the center. Inhale, reaching up and exhale to the other side. Inhale and exhale to center. Here we go again, breathing in, reaching up and then breathing out, bend the knees, forward fold. Let's do this with a little bit more flow. Inhale, flatten the back, hover the hands if you can. Exhale, deeper forward bend. Inhale, flatten the back, sweep the arms out, reach up. Exhale, coming down through the midline of the body. Inhale, take the arms up. Exhale, sway to the right. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, come down to center. Inhale, reaching up and exhale, sway to the left. Inhale, coming up and exhale, hands to the center. I'm going to talk you through one more and then let you do uh, one more in your own pace. Breathing in, reaching up, breathing out, bending the knees hands to thigh, little forward bend. Inhale, flat back, back strengthener. Exhale, deeper forward bend. Inhale, bend the knees, flat back, sweep the arms around and up. And exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, send the hands up. And exhale, side stretch, keep the tummy in. Inhale, reach up and exhale. Inhale, reach up and exhale to the other side. Inhale, come up and exhale, release the hands to the heart. So one more round in your own time. Just as you're doing that, I'm going to do one myself. In the chair so people can see how it works in the chair as well.
We're coming to the end of that one. If it's still working, just finish the sun salutation that you're on. And then we're going to, um, we're going to just do a little bit of lunging now. And um, we're going to use the chair for this one. I'm just going to show you the non-chair version first for those who prefer to do it. So we'll take the, the blanket under the left knee, set the right leg forwards, and we're gonna, we're gonna work here, and then we're going to take the hands behind, if you can, and stretch the arms away. And then we're gonna come forwards down the inside of the right knee to stretch into the hip a little bit more. However, I've become a big fan of doing this posture using a chair. So if you've got one, as I suggested, then have a go with it because it really, it does a couple of things. Uh, it, it intensifies the work on the straight back leg. It takes away the need to bear weight through the knee joint. So uh, to me, it's a, it's a better version. Uh, so we're going to feel like we are leaning forwards with the back leg. So this back leg is not under the left hip. There's an angle there. And the distance back that that foot goes really all depends on what is going on in your body through the front of that left thigh, through the, the quad and the hip flexor. So what you don't want to do is turn this back foot out. So if you're feeling that the heel is lifting like that when you come into the lunge, then you just need to make your stance a little bit narrower. If you're here and there's absolutely nothing going on and you can easily get that back heel on the mat, and then just take it, take it back a little bit further and try and find that sweet spot where the leg is working, the stretch is there, but it's not over, overly intense. Let's use the hands on this right thigh to develop the stretch and really feel like we're drawing the shoulders back now. We're lifting the rib cage. We're back in that position we had in the chair, in the upper chest. We're keeping the tummy drawing in. We're not going to do anything with the neck. And there's a whole lot of good stuff going on as we just breathe here. So that's quite a long time. Might be feeling that a little bit in the body. So let's quickly do our variation, which is take the hands back or even interlace the hands behind the back. And then breathing in, just a couple more breaths here. So now you're drawing the shoulders back even further, squeezing the shoulder blades together behind the back. And then release from that, push into the right knee, come off and just step, step out and feel that stretch in the legs, particularly the length you've created on this left side. So we can take the left leg up now. The chair against the sofa, if you had, had a chair against the wall, that would be ideal as well. I just want to have that chair so wherever you put your weight in it, it's not going to move as you work with it. So find, find the sweet spot on this side. It might be slightly different. You might have a slightly longer hip flexor on one side than the other. So we're trying to work the legs equally here. And try and keep that sensation in the, the calf and the heel of the back leg the same as you felt on the other side. So we're lengthening the, the calf muscles, stretching through the Achilles tendon there. Keeping the spine upright, drawing the shoulders back. And then taking the hands behind, interlacing the fingers, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Maybe you don't have to do this when you can just stretch the arms back. A couple more breaths here. And then release the hands, push away, come off the chair, give the legs a little shake. So we'll do, we'll do one more lunge uh, and we'll use the posture to open the hips a little bit more. And then we'll do a little sequence where we'll integrate that lunge into a vinyasa. So we'll take the right leg back up. We'll start with the hands on the thigh. 
And then we're going to breathe in and reach up with the hands, palms facing in towards each other. And then exhaling, taking the hands down and have the arms straight to begin with. And hopefully you can reach the chair. If the hips are really tight, you might be up on fingertips. You might even need to put a yoga block on the seat of your chair. However, if, the, if your hips are open enough and you've got your arms straight, then breath by breath, on an exhale, you're going to soften the elbows and just allow your shoulders to creep down the inside of the right knee. And fairly quickly, you will feel the work in the right hip intensifying. Um, and because you're lowering, lowering the upper body in gravity, you've got total control over how deep you go into this. So if it gets too intense in terms of hip opening, just straighten the arms a little bit and back out of that opening. If you can, we're just here for another breath. And then to come out, breathing in, straighten the arms, take some weight into the right foot, one hand up, other hand up stepping off, give the legs a shake. And then here we go with the left foot, finding our lunge position, breathing in, reaching up, palms in, facing into each other, shoulders are down rather than coming up. Exhale, folding down the inside of the left knee this time, arms are straight, or fingertips, or on a yoga block and each exhale softening down a little bit more, releasing the upper body in gravity and finding just the right amount of hip opening in that left hip for you. You just tuck the chin in and let the crown of the head hang forward to create some space in the back of your neck here. And then on the next inhale, arms straight, press into the left foot a little bit, left hand on the left thigh coming up and release. Give the arms a little shrug. So uh, here we go, let's have a little go at this vinyasa. It's going to involve a forward bend, a version of downward dog, stepping in and out of the lunge and a hamstring stretch. So we'll start with the palms together in front of the heart. And we're going to breathe in and open up. And then we're going to breathe out, bend the knees, take the hands forward towards the chair, and then exhale, folding down. Now, in this position, you can inhale and take as much stretch in your legs as your hamstrings will allow. As you straighten the legs, you don't want to feel the, the back arching up. So get this position first with the back flat, the knees bent. And if you engage a little bit of your core strength, that will hold the spine in this position and you can just lift the sit bones slightly and find that length in the back of the legs. For those who want to, you could take the hands down. If it's safe to go head below heart, but this is actually a really nice um, hamstring stretch and kind of downward dog variation. And then on the next inhale, we're going to release the hands down. We're going to come up, reach the arms forward, and then take the foot onto the chair and exhale into our lunge. And inhale, come into a hamstring stretch using the chair. So push the heel away, pull the toes back. Uh, this should be absolutely fine unless you have uh, a tendency to hyperextend at the knee. If you're doing that, then you might need to feel as if you're slightly bending the knee in order to keep the leg straight. If you, if you hyperextend at the back of the knee, you've probably got enough hamstring length anyway. So uh, just engage the muscles around the leg, draw this right sit bone back, as well as feeling that the right heel is going away from you. So creating length from both ends down that right leg. And then releasing from the stretch, inhale, bend the knee back into the lunge, exhale, 
coming off. Inhale, arms up. Other side, exhale, forward fold, hands onto the chair. Exhale, knees bent, back is long and flat. And if you want to stretch the hamstrings here, engage the core, exhale, lift the sit bones. Remember you can do a full forward fold here if you want to. I actually recommend the chair to get more shoulder release as well. One more breath here, exhale. And then inhale, flatten the back, release the hands. Powering up on the next inhale. And then exhale, stepping the left leg forwards. And inhale into the lunge. And exhale, let the leg straighten. Exactly the same, drawing the left sit bone back now, stretching the left heel away, taking care of that knee joint. My hands are resting here, but I'm not going to lean any weight into that thigh to protect the knee there. Enjoy the stretch, breathe freely. If you can't straighten your leg, don't worry. And two more breaths. Finishing on the next exhale, and then breathing in, coming into the lunge, and breathing out, releasing. So we're gonna move through that sequence one more time, a little bit more at your own pace, following your own breath. I will cue you in, but feel free to work with your own breath. So breathing in, open the chest, soft shoulders, breathing out, come into your forward bend whichever version you want to work with. Inhale, lengthen the spine, and exhale, stretch the hamstrings. One more breath here, inhale, draw the hips back. Exhale, lengthen the hamstrings. End of that exhale, drop the hands down. Bend the knees flat back, inhale, power up. Exhale, right leg forwards. Inhale, deepen the lunge, and exhale, coming into the hamstring stretch. Inhale, and exhale. Feel as if the length and space and release in this right hamstring is coming on your long exhale. Keeping that stretched out breath, long inhale, long exhale. Breathing in, coming back into the lunge. Breathing out, release the leg down. Breathing in, raise the arms, soft shoulders. Breathing out, fall forwards. Breathing in, flat back, bent knees. Exhale, fold. And stretch the hamstrings. One more breath here, inhale. Exhale. End of that exhale, release the hands, bend the knees, flat back, like Utkatasana, power up on an inhale. Exhale, take the left leg onto the chair for the lunge. Inhale, deepen the lunge. Exhale, coming into your hamstring stretch. Inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and lengthening, softening that left hamstring on the exhale. Inhale, coming back into the lunge. Exhale, release. Give the arms a shake, give the legs a little shake. Notice how you're feeling in your body. We're done with the chair for now. We're going to do a little bit of a winding down tail to the class. This is where we're going to use the blanket and you're going to come into all fours with the hands a good six inches in front of the shoulders, spreading the fingers 
just resting on the top of the feet, knees are hip width apart, and come into a really easy cat cow movement, breathing in, opening the chest, breathing out, tucking the chin and the tailbone under, arching the back. Just one more of these. Inhale, come back to neutral. If you've got any wrist problems, you could always rest the hands back on the seat of the chair. If you're okay to continue, bring the knees together and just stretch the right leg away and tuck the toes under and push the heel away, lengthen the heel away, just to create that stretch through the soles of the feet. So as we're doing that, it's going to show you that, that chair modification. Those wrist problems are so common. And then bring that right leg back and extend the left leg away from you. Toes tucked under, pushing through the heel, nice stretch through the leg. Left knee back, stretch the right leg out again. And this time, keeping the leg straight, rotate all the way up into the hip joint with a, a full rotation of the head of the femur into that hip joint, but at the same time getting this lovely rolling action through the toes. And we can do it with the toes in this position, and then we can deliberately curl the toes under. So I'm actually on the tops of the toes now doing exactly the same movement. Uh, and that isn't for everyone if you've got any joint problems in the feet, but it will keep your feet supple. And then put the toes under again and just finish this leg by bending the knee and rolling backwards and forwards over the toes. And then right knee coming back, we can do the same on the other side. Tuck the toes under and rotate the straight leg. Nice, easy movement, lots of rotation into the hip and all toes involved in being stretched out. If you liked curling the toes under, coming onto the top of the toes, try that on this side. And then put the toes back where they were and roll forwards and backwards over the toes. The advantage of doing this toe work like this is there's very little weight going through the foot. So we could do this from kneeling, but it would be just a little bit more intense. Okay, bring that left leg back. We're gonna take a resting pose now. You could use the chair or you could take the hands onto the mat and rest the forehead down on a pillow created by your two hands or two fists. And just pause there for a moment. And then just, just checking, checking with the time. I think we've got time just to do one more here. Um, Cause I do, I do like to make sure we do at least one back strengthening practice with each class. So we'll bring the knees together again. You could be in cat position or use the chair. Breathing in, take the straight leg back and just lift it to parallel or slightly higher than the hip. And exhale, swing the knee through, nod the forehead towards the knee three times with the right leg. And then three times with the left. Just making sure you try to keep the hips nice and level so that it's the glute that's working. We're not doing any rotational movement with the hips. And then coming back to neutral. So if you're on all fours, just coming down onto your elbows, 
like this and then breathing in arching the back on inhale exhale lowering the elbows back down and if you're using the chair exactly the same thing inhale and exhale so it would be easy just to push with the hands and the forearms to get yourself up but resist that and just just use those back muscles to feel like you are lifting the elbows via via a strong back that's great and then next time you lower just come back into resting pose for a moment and then from here we're going to come down into lying on our back I'm just going to leave the chair there because we can use it one more time at the end so this is the first time we've been in semi-supine favorite position uh, that I like to teach some practice from so just take a moment to establish this new position and Remember, you want to make sure that your chin is not jutting up higher than your forehead and that the back of the neck is being compressed in any way. So depending on what's going on in your spine, you'll just need a blanket. Some people need a yoga block under the back of the head to get the forehead high enough to be either level with or higher, slightly higher than the chin. That is fine. You just don't want the chin higher than the forehead. In this position, we're going to exhale, drawing the tummy muscles in and just feel like the tailbone is going away from you and the space in the lower back. Inhale and exhale. So it's just a little bit of pelvic tilting going on. Inhale, pelvis tilts this way. Exhale, pelvis tilts that way. Inhale and exhale. And this time, keep the lower back flat on the floor arms beside the body and then breathing in lift the pelvis up off the mat and exhale roll the pelvis down after all that getting the head supported we just need to take that support out for a moment while we progress this shoulder bow position so now coming a little bit higher breathing in maybe coming up eight inches to a foot exhale rolling down from the middle part of the back to the pelvis on the exhale and then just one or two more so if you like back bending if your spine is flexible you might feel yourself coming quite high in this one on the inhale and then using that exhale to really free the spine and lay it down vertebra by vertebra and just a little extension activity if you like this one again for the more flexible on the end of the inhale let the heels come up as well that gives you that additional little bit of height and you can really feel that the toes and the shoulders now are doing the weight bearing for you and then exhale heels down and still exhaling roll the spine down and last one and at the end of that exhale knees are coming in and we're going to rock the knees from side to side and gently take the head the opposite way to the knees and then we'll extend that gentle twisting movement by taking the feet down extending the arms away shoulder height feet hip width apart exhale knees to the right head to the left inhale head and knees to center exhale knees to the left head to the right so just do a few more of those with your breath if you're experienced quite flexible with these twists and you want to bring the feet and the knees together to make it a little deeper feel free to do that and if you're used to bringing the knees in over the chest and going in and out of the twists that way which requires a lot more core strength um, please do that if it's safe for you and you want to. Otherwise, feet on the floor hit with the part is absolutely fine. And that is a, a very safe, a safe version of this twist. Uh, 
Okay, so next time the knees go to the left, we're going to say that's the last one. So we've just got two more poses to do. We're going to do a forward bend from lying on our backs, and then we're going to come into a mild inversion. So we'll come back to supporting the back of the head. And I've been teaching this version of the forward bend for many weeks now. Um, finding it very effective and people are doing it and finding it very effective. So we're taking the, the right foot up in the air, the left foot is going to stay on the mat and the back of the pelvis is going to remain glued to the earth, glued to the mat. So really feel that you're going to make the stretch happen from this earth connection of the back of the pelvis. We don't want to see is this happening where the left foot is pressing and the the hips have lifted. This is a kind of floating twist that lacks grounding. Keep the pelvis on the mat. So if we start with the knee bent and the belt around our right foot, you can actually just draw, draw the leg deep into the right side of the hips and feel that connection down through the back of the pelvis down to the earth. Notice the, the knee is bent. This is the inhale position. We're going to exaggerate that a bit more as we breathe in. And then we're going to stretch the exhale as long as we can, comfortably lengthened, and come into the stretch. Inhaling, softening out of the stretch. Exhaling, moving more deeply into the stretch. Try to find a comfortable and sustainable way of stretching this hamstring. If it's tight, you just need to rein in your expectations and allow the intelligence of this movement, the inhale release phase, the exhale lengthening phase to work its magic. So for the more flexible among you, the next exhale we're going to come into a held stretch and this leg can remain vertical, it can even start to move in towards the leg and optionally you can straighten the left leg as well if you would like to. We're going to keep the head and the shoulders on the floor. We're going to breathe here steadily and even though we're not bending the knee now on the inhale, we are thinking about finding the length of the stretch only on the exhale. So let your in-breath be a little pause, a little gathering of energy and breath and intention and let the long exhale be the breath that helps you find a little more space in the back of this right leg. So on the next inhale we'll release from that, we'll soften the right knee, we'll bring the left leg back in and then we'll let the left foot take over the belt and take the right foot back into semi-supine. So same starting position, left knee is bent, use the belt, draw the left head of the femur deep into the left hip socket, make the back of the pelvis feel as if it is rooting and settling down to the mat behind you. Inhale, bend the knee a little bit more, long exhale, stretch the left leg. Work with your breath, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, long exhale. Last one of the dynamic stretches, inhale, soften the hamstring, exhale, come into the stretch and now finding your sustainable stretch, keeping this right leg bent or if you want to, sliding the right leg straight and allowing your breath to be in charge of developing this stretch using the exhale to deepen it.
And then on your next inhale, soften that right knee, bring that right leg back, release the belt from that left foot, and let both knees come in over the chest and take a, a short counter pose, a little bit of rocking from side to side, a little bit of drawing the knees in towards the chest to stretch out the lower back. And then our final position is a, a restorative inversion using the chair. Just not teaching poses like shoulder stand via this online environment because it can't really be taught safely. But again, if you're a yoga teacher or a really experienced practitioner and you want to do a different inversion to this one and it's safe for you to do so, then please do. But this is a lovely, a lovely way to end the class with a, a yoga block under the pelvis, a blanket under the head, the lower legs resting on your chair. Bring the head to neutral, relax the shoulders, relax the arms, relax the legs. We're going to take around about five really steady, smooth, slow breaths here. Just allowing the heart rate to settle and the body to move into the final stages before relaxation. So round about now, if you're feeling really comfortable and you'd like to remain in this position for a little bit longer during the, at least the start of the relaxation, feel free to do that. If not, you're going to come down and come into a comfortable position for you, which might be the classical Shavasana relaxation position with the legs straight, or you could have the knees bent. If you in semi supine, take the feet a little bit wider and rest the knees against each other, which helps the legs to relax. Don't forget to support the head. Don't want that chin in relaxation to be higher than the forehead. And then ensuring that you are comfortable and remain comfortable. So please do adjust your posture if you get uncomfortable at any time. Going to use the breath for a simple body scan. So keeping your eyes closed and if you'd rather not close the eyes, have a soft gaze up towards the ceiling. Take a moment to notice exactly how you're feeling after your practice. Notice any transformation in the body, the breath, and the mind. We are going to use the breath as a simple tool for this relaxation. So continue with your own mindful breathing and with that intention of having a comfortably full inhale and a comfortably long exhale. But for the relaxation, it's the quality and flow of that breath that is more important than the depth. And then with that flowing breath, take your awareness to the right foot. And as you breathe in, notice the sensations in the right foot. And as you exhale, allow the right foot to relax. Notice the sensations in the whole of the right leg. And as you inhale, feel as if you're breathing into the whole of the right leg, holding all those sensations in your mind. And as you exhale, allow the right leg to relax. Once more with the right leg, inhale, hold of the right leg. 
exhale, relax. Awareness to the left foot, breathing in, notice all the sensations in the left foot and exhale, relax. Inhale into the whole of the left leg, notice all the sensations there and exhale, use your exhale to allow the left leg to relax. Inhale, hold of the left leg. Exhale, relax. Awareness to the pelvis, front of the pelvis, sides of the pelvis, back of the pelvis and the pelvic floor. Inhale, notice all the sensations in the pelvis. And as you exhale, allow the pelvis to relax. Inhale, hold of the pelvis. Exhale, relax. Move your awareness up to the lower back. And that is the lower back, the lower sides of the body and the soft abdomen at the front. Notice all the sensations in the abdomen, the sides of the body and the lower back. Breathing in and exhale. Allow that area to relax. Inhale, lower back and surrounding area. Exhale. Relax. Move your awareness up to the chest, particularly the rib cage, the back of the ribs, at the back of the body resting down to the floor, the side ribs, and the front of the ribs and the breastbone, the sternum. Inhale, bring your awareness to all the sensations in the chest. And exhale, allow the chest to relax. Inhale into the whole of the chest. And exhale, relax. Awareness to the right hand, notice the sensations there. Inhale. And exhale, relax. Awareness to the whole of the right arm and shoulder. Inhale, notice the sensations. Exhale, relax. Whole of the right arm and shoulder. Inhale. Exhale, relax. Awareness to the left hand. Inhale, notice the sensations. Exhale, relax. Inhale, whole of the left arm and left shoulder. Exhale, relax. Inhale, left arm and left shoulder. Exhale, relax. Awareness to the neck, the back of the neck, the sides of the neck the front of the neck. Inhale, notice the sensations in the neck and exhale, relax. Inhale to the neck, exhale, relax. Awareness to the head, back of the head, sides of the head, crown of the head and the face. Inhale, notice all the sensations in the head and face. Maybe wriggle the jaw, relax the tongue, allow the eyes to sink back into the eye sockets. And exhale, relax. Inhale, awareness to the head. Exhale, relax. Bring your awareness to sensations into every part of your body, 
hold every part of your body in your awareness. And as you breathe in, imagine breathing into every part of your body. And as you breathe out, allow every part of your body to relax. Two more times in your own time. At the end of your next exhale, just remaining in stillness, release your breath into its natural rhythm. Find out just for a few more breaths how still you can be, how steady you can be in your body, your breath, your mind. Now allow your breath to deepen. Move the fingers, wriggle the toes, and stretch your arms and your legs in any way that feels good. And if you're lying on your back with your legs straight, draw the knees in over the chest. And then take the feet down onto the mat, roll onto your side. Take a moment or two there and then make your way back up to sitting, either sitting cross-legged or indeed back in the chair if that is more comfortable for you. I'm going to close the class with final five nourishing self-care breaths using the same practice we did at the beginning of the class. So we're going to bring the palms together as we breathe in, we're going to feel the soft abdomen, the expansion of the abdominal breath. Then we're going to feel the ribs coming in, and we're going to feel the lifting of the in-breath. And pointing the fingers up to the ceiling as the final bit of in-breath comes into the top of the lungs. Exhale. Releasing down. Effortless exhale. In your own time. Effortless fullness of breath on the inhale, effortless release of breath on the exhale. Feel as if your hands are just conducting now this one seamless breath that has quality of flow and integration is a really healing and calming breath for you, a really nourishing breath that you deserve and need at this time. At the end of your next exhale, releasing the hands down to a comfortable position, keeping your eyes closed or downcast for a moment longer and having a final check in with how you feel right now. I hope the practice has been helpful for you. Thank you for joining me.